Hi, I'm Jimmy Chang, and we're here to talk about how to find the precise definition of a limit in calculus. It's kind of lengthy, so let me just write the definition down, and I'll explain briefly in layman's terms what that means. So, the limit definition is the limit as x approaches c of f of x equals to l. Now, literally, the textbooks will tell you that this definition means, and or here's what it means, is that for for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Now, what that basically tells you in really as simplest terms as possible is that if you have a limit that exists, what that pretty much means that if the distance between x and that number c is going to be less than a certain number, then the distance between the y-coordinate and another number l will also be less than another number epsilon. So the idea here is that the limit, the key word in limit is approaching. So that means if x approaches a certain number c, and the y coordinate approaches a certain number l, that means the distances between the two pairs of numbers will be very, very small. And that's what epsilon and delta are really going to be. They're going to be very, very small numbers. So that means the idea, once again, is that if the distance between x and the number that is approaching c is going to be small, less than delta, then the distance between the y coordinate, f of x, and l is also going to be very, very small, and that distance is going to be less than epsilon. Are delta and epsilon going to be the same? Not necessarily, they could be, but what they're basically telling you here is that if a limit exists, then the, the distances between the x coordinates and the y coordinates and their respective values would be very, very small. So, I'm Jimmy Chang, and that's a demonstration of the precise definition of a limit in calculus.